Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you how to break a water fast and get the best results after your water fast in the safest way possible and the worst mistakes that a lot of people make after a water fast. And what I wanna say is this video does not apply to dry fasting or juice fasting, it is just water fasting specifically. If you want me to make a video on how to refeed on those other types of fasts, let me know down below and I can make videos on them. So I am someone that has for many years in the past done a lot of intermittent fasting, multiple day fasting with water, also dry fasting as well. I've also interviewed people such as the Fasting Fat Man that water fasted for around 150 days and lost 225 pounds of weight and he refeeded in a way that was very safe and gave him the best results after the water fast where he could continue to lose weight. If you wanna check out his YouTube channel, I highly recommend you do, there'll be a link down below. And also there was Angus Barbarian, which was around a very long time ago. It was documented this fast. I did a video on this. If you want to learn the ins and outs about this, click the link for the video up above. But this man did a record long fast of 382 days and he ended up losing 275 pounds of weight. So I wanted to mention them alongside my own personal experience. So you know I'm someone that really knows what I'm talking about. And talking about them briefly, gets you to realize that you can fast for a very long time, but that is only applicable to people that have a lot of excess body weight to burn, which is just stored fuel from the food that they've been over consuming over the years. So now let's get on with the video. So first off, I'm gonna talk about refeeding syndrome, the worst mistakes you can make, and then the best way you can refeed. So let's first get onto the refeeding syndrome. So if you're not aware of what this is, is when someone breaks a water fast, if they refeed in the incorrect worst ways possible, which could be, for example, they just consume an abundance of food and their body just ends up going into shock because the whole digestive system has been shut down for a very long time and it's just overworking the system and then it causes an imbalance with fluids in the body and it causes electrolyte imbalances and a lot of other imbalances and issues that you do not want to be induced within you as well. And it also can happen due to eating certain very unhealthy processed foods and just not the most ideal foods to refeed with. And if you actually induce this within you, which it can be quite rare for most people to induce it within themselves after refeeding when they've been on a long water fast and then they are giving themselves food again after not having it for quite some time, it can induce symptoms such as heart arrhythmia, fevers, seizures, make your blood pressure skyrocket, induce fatigue, mess up your digestion when you get bloating and gas and just a whole host of other issues that you do not want induced within you because it could actually be fatal and it could actually end your life in the most rarest of situations and you might even need to be hospitalized which that's obviously something that you do not want to be inducing within you. So you just want to be avoiding the worst mistakes. So like I said, don't be consuming loads and loads of calories when you refeed or even days after you refeed. Don't consume loads of garbage or processed food. Make sure that you consume some foods that are some natural foods that are gonna give you an abundance of the different electrolytes which would have been depleted whilst you were on a long water fast. And one reason that you want to do this, which I hadn't mentioned a moment ago, is with the really feeding syndrome, you can end up having your phosphorus levels drop rapidly low. So you want to be making sure that you're eating foods when refeeding that are very, very rich and a good source of magnesium, potassium, and sodium to really rebalance your electrolytes within your body that have been depleted due to being on a long water fast. And a couple other mistakes that people could make is even if you're eating food that is the most optimal food for you to refeed with, you may just be consuming way too much too quickly. So you've got to be very conscious around how much food that you're consuming when refeeding. Feeding. And then the last mistake is someone might not just be refeeding for long enough. So they think, oh, 
I've refed for enough days and now I can really up my calorie intake, eat a broader range of different foods and then it could induce the refeeding syndrome. Because refeeding syndrome can normally happen two to three days after you break a long water fast and it can even happen anywhere up to seven to 10 days after a water fast. Obviously, the longer that you water fast, the longer you need to refeed for. I would recommend for every week of water fasting that you refeed for around two to three days and then when you go back to having more food within your diet and you're eating a lot more within your meals just try and keep it as clean and as healthy as you possibly can and then if you want to start gaining a lot of weight like myself i eat in a calorie surplus pretty much every single day at the moment so trying to put on muscle then you can do that over a period of time but just do it gradually until your body just gets to a point where it's back where it was before the water fast where all of your digestive functions and digestive juices and everything is just switched on back fully and functioning fully so you can digest and eliminate foods and assimilate foods without any issues. So now on to the best way to refeed. And I know some people eat a specific diet or they might be switching to a specific diet after a water fast. So I'm gonna give you a few different variations. So obviously, if you're someone that has diabetes, then you wouldn't necessarily want to feed yourself back with certain foods that are gonna skyrocket your blood sugar levels. So if you're someone that comes under this category, I would recommend that you ideally refeed with something such as bone broth. I would say this is one of the number one best things that you could refeed with. One, because it is full of collagen, which is one of the most abundant proteins within the body, which gives you optimal gut health and gives you a whole host of other benefits as well. But also, it is one of the most mineral rich foods that you could put within your body. And it's perfect for people with diabetes because it has no carbohydrates in it. So it's not going to spike your blood sugar levels whatsoever. If you don't know how to make bone broth, do some research up online on how to make it, or you can find a company that can make it. And a word of warning with bone broth, make sure whatever bone broth that you're buying or you're making, that it has been made with bones that have come from pasture raised animals, because otherwise it can be very, very high in a lot of toxic heavy metals and other certain things that you do not want to put within your body, which could actually make you feel really bad. And if you're someone that has issues with histamines, make sure that the bone broth has only been cooked up for around six to eight hours, because after that period, it will start to form a lot of histamines and some people do have a histamine intolerance. Also, this is what I would recommend for people that are on a ketogenic diet or even a carnival diet. So next I'm gonna go on to a vegan diet. So what I would recommend, and I used to do this for myself when I used to be vegan, which used to eat a vegan diet for around six years, but I quit actually late last year if you wanna know why, put a link for the video up above. What I'd recommend for people on this diet is that you refeed with high water content fruit that has a low glycemic load. So don't be consuming things such as dates or bananas or any other fruits that have a very high glycemic load. It's just not a good idea whatsoever because it's gonna just make your insulin production go through the roof and your blood sugar levels and it could just make you feel really bad and could actually induce some very negative symptoms within you. So one of the most ideal fruits would be a watermelon. Yes, it has a high glycemic index, but I think glycemic index should just not even be a part of seeing if a food is gonna affect your blood sugar levels in a negative way, because you wanna look at the glycemic load. The glycemic load takes into the equation the water content of the food. So when you actually work this out and compare the glycemic index to the glycemic load, the glycemic index is high, but the glycemic load, which is the thing you wanna actually be focused upon, is very, very low with a watermelon. And with whatever food that you're gonna be introducing back into your diet, for any of the diets that I am mentioning, is just make sure that you consume a little amount when you refeed. So if you're gonna consume watermelon, just have a handful of watermelon. And you could have this multiple times throughout the day, but make sure that you space it out and you don't just absolutely gorge on it. With the bone broth, you should be able to consume a bowl of it without any issue after a long water fast. And if you feel that you want to consume more later on, then 
do so. On the first day, you consume less. On the second day, you could consume say 10, maybe even 20% more than you did the day before, and then just keep increasing it by that percentage every single day until you get to the point where you can go back to your normal eating regime. And what I'm gonna do is now throw in a few other different foods that you could break your fast with and use for refeeding. So some people have done it with raw eggs and they get on really well that some people don't. Some people do it with raw meat. They're on a raw carnivore diet that may sound quite extreme, but yes, some people do do that. Then there's some people that have green juices, which some people have issues with plant toxins. So if you've got issues with that, then it's not necessarily the best thing to consume. But one of the best green juices that you could consume after a long water fast is celery juice because this is very, very nutrient rich and it actually helps with increasing your stomach acid levels, which a lot of people have low stomach acid production. And you can have all the other different types of green juices, but I'd recommend that you avoid all processed foods you avoid fruit juices because they've had the fiber removed, so they are gonna make your blood sugar levels absolutely skyrocket. Keep away from anything that has sugar in it or refined salt or preservatives or additives or anything that is just not natural and that you find in abundance in junk foods and processed foods and fast food. And actually, I'm gonna add one last thing on, and this is what I personally would break any long water fast with now because I'm not on a vegan diet. And that is raw, organic, grass-fed milk. A lot of people have a lot of fear around this, but actually pasteurized milk is the one you need to be scared of. It's like a Frankenstein of milk and it's not good for you in any way, shape or form. Do not drink that at all after a water fast, otherwise it's gonna mess you up big time. And when you reintroduce this back in to your refeeding diet after a long water fast, you could just start off with just a very small glass of it and just to even have a few sips and just sip it throughout the day and see how you are with this. And it is very abundant in magnesium and potassium, selenium, iodine, and many other nutrients that would have been depleted from your body whilst on a water fast. And a couple of things I'm gonna add on to the video before I end is if you're someone that wants to do refeeding for a while and then jump back in to a long water fast, which is what fasting fat man did to continue his weight loss results that he was looking to get so he could speed up the weight loss as fast as possible, then you can do that. But just remember that when you are refeeding, that you refeed for long enough and eat the most nutrient rich foods that you possibly can. Because if you're someone that doesn't do this and you jump back into another long water fast, you could end up with some severe negative issues occurring within you whilst on a water fast because you really didn't put back into the body the abundance of different micronutrients that you needed so you don't actually end up becoming deficient on a water fast, which is something that you do not want to happen whatsoever. So be very safe and wise and clever with refeeding and what you're doing. And one last word of warning, which is, if you're someone that's already super skinny and you don't have a lot of weight to lose, do not go on a long water fast. I've seen people do this time and time again, they're already very slim and they end up coming out looking like Jack Skeleton. That's not good to do that whatsoever. So that's it from me in this video. Got any comments or questions, leave them down below and i get back as soon as possible. If you like the video, like it down below, give us a thumbs up, Please share this with others and don't forget to click that subscribe button and click the bell notification button next to the subscribe button. Otherwise, YouTube will not notify you of when those new videos are uploaded and I have new ones coming almost every single day. So as always, stay fit, stay happy, stay energetic and enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.